Okay, so I talked about um, routers last time and now I want to talk about switch and because your router is so powerful and it does so many different things, most people think of it as the backbone of your network. It is actually not the backbone of your network. The switch is. So the switch with all of its glory and its ports and everything it does, I don't even know how many there are. I think that's an odd number. Let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, not bad. Probably not a 10 port switch out there that's very common. You're coming about 12, 16, 8, 32, 64, those kind of numbers. Um, so this is a switch. What a switch does is it connects up multiple devices to your network. All right. And this one will go to a printer. And then this one will go to like an Apple TV. You know, so you have your Apple TV there. I don't even know if that's, what is that? That's a, that's like a fire stick. There's an HDMI port. Yeah, let's call it a fire stick <laughs> from Amazon. And maybe you have a smart TV that's wired to. There's a smart TV. So everything that's wired to the switch is part of your network. And your network serves as the backbone. Kind of even looks like a backbone, doesn't it? Um, so without a switch, you don't have a network. All right. So if you have a router, you don't have a you you kind of have a network, but you can only connect it to to two devices. You can connect it to your ISP and you can connect it to a local device in your network, and that's it. Because a router just has an in and out, it has two ports. All right. And your modem does too. So here's your modem. Your modem has one connecting to your internet service provider and one connecting, and actually, yeah, your modem would be connected to your switch. Anyway. Um, your switch is the only device other than what we're going to talk about next that can connect up multiple devices. Okay. So it allows all these devices to become part of a network. All right. So if a packet comes from this computer and it wants to send a print, the, the packet has to go and it goes down here. And why did it go down here and not to all the other ports? Well, that's because the switch is doing what it's supposed to. It has a table inside that it builds up over time and it remembers what this IP address is and it remembers what this IP address is and what port that IP address is connected to. Okay. So this is why if you ever, if you ever have problems with your network, they always tell your power cycle because what power cycle does is it deletes this routing table and the switch has to start building it up again. And it does it very fast with only a couple seconds, your router will have figured out all the devices that is that are connected and it'll start it'll start going oh, okay i remember what port that that uh, computer one's connected to i remember port what what justin's ipad's connected to i remember okay cool we're good to go um it can work without building this table but if this table isn't built yet inside the switch this packet will go out in and it'll go out every single port until the table's built okay why don't they just make the switches like this? Well, they used to. They used to be called hubs. You can still find hubs. And a hub, all it does is very stupid device. I call it stupid because it's not very smart. It's not stupid because I'm being derogatory towards it. It's just, it basically takes packets that come in one port and sends it out every port. Why is that a problem? Because all these devices are trying to talk all the time. So if you have, you know, one device sending a, a, a packet in and it comes out every single port and this one's trying to do the same thing, it's just chaos. So a switch is like a hub, but they built a little table and a routing table and it remembers what's connected to what. So when this packet gets sent from this computer, it just goes through this path and not any other path. It really cleans up the entire communication line. So when the fire stick talks to your router and your router's right here and it goes, Ooh, here's a packet and I want to, I want to, I want to receive a Netflix movie. And the router goes, okay, no problem. I'm going to send a Netflix movie to you. And it comes back here and it goes just to your fire stick. All right. It doesn't go to anywhere else. And all these devices are free to talk. Did you notice that during that whole process, the Netflix movie, this right here communication line was not broken. They could talk to each other as much as they wanted. So this is the, the important part of a switch. And this is also why I'm going to get into wiring. This is also why I recommend you wire as many devices as possible. Because the more devices you wire up, the cleaner the communication lines are, the less problems you're going to have. Also, there's no interference that can happen to wires from like, you know, lights, 
you know, or um, that's my version of a light. So um, or electrical outlets or or um, wall warts plugged into your uh, these things spit off all kinds of uh, electromagnetic interference. So it's a very clean it's a clean signal. This isn't going to be confused about this signal is going to be clean. It's um, it's going to get there almost 100% of the time. Um, depending on the quality of this cable and the quality and the length of the signal and everything like that. It's almost always going to get there. So this is why I recommend wiring up all your devices to a switch because they will always have a connection. Okay. What else could I tell you about a switch? Well, a switch will only be able to share an internet connection if you have a router. So let's, let's draw our switch again and we have our ports. And let's just say you wanted to share an internet connection. Here's our printer and here's our computer. And here's our smart TV. Let's say, hey, I want all these devices on the internet. Okay, great. Well, one way to ensure they not, they don't get all get an internet connection is to take a modem and if you don't know about a modem, check out my first video. We talked about a modem. And take your modem that has the cable internet coming in from the ISP or the phone internet and connect it up to your switch. You will not get internet on most of these devices. In fact, you only get it on one. And the one device you'll get, the one device that receives internet from the world is going to be the one that's fast enough to swoop up that IP address that one single IP address unique to the entire world that the ISP gave you, it gave you one to share. The ISP was nice enough to give us, because we pay every month, we pay for the IP address. It gives us one IP address, every, one, one to share, and, and all the devices have to use it. But if you just connect your modem to a switch, that IP address is going to go straight through, and it's going to be assigned to the first device that swoops it up. Now, what do all the other devices do? Well, they're stuck. They can't talk to anybody. They don't have an IP address. They can't get internet. You can't get internet. Nothing can get internet. Okay? So you can't connect multiple devices to a modem. I talked about this when I talked about a modem. All right? So, how do we solve this problem? Well, I already talked about a device that can solve it. And that is our router. Okay? We put in a router here in between the modem and the switch and all of a sudden it creates a barrier. The router receives this world IP address right there and then the router has the ability to dish out IP addresses to everybody else. So now you have one IP address because you only get assigned one but the router catches it. The router is the first thing to catch it. If you were to connect even in this setup right here, if you were to say, well, screw that, I want a really good connection. I don't want to go through this switch and all this modem uh, router stuff. I want to take my TV and connect it up to here, to the modem, because your modem might have another port on it. This won't get internet now, because your router has the IP address. It holds the single IP address you get from the internet service provider. The only way this could get internet and all these other devices get internet is if they connect to the switch and the switch connects to the router and the router connects to the modem. Now, what about wireless devices? We have a tablet. Well, that's using a device called a WAP, a wireless access point, which I will talk about next.